If you know anything about me, you will know that I spend a huge amount of time supporting entrepreneurs and small business owners, whether through my content, the events I attend and speak at, or even in my role as a non-exec director of the UK Development Bank, British Business Bank, which has facilitated over 90 billion uh, financial support for UK small and growth businesses. I have founded, partnered with, invested in, advised, and even acquired many small and new businesses. I'm also, like you, a customer of many, from shops to tradespeople or professional advisors or the business currently working on my custom van conversion that's going to enable me to stay out on the road and engage with more small business owners. So, hello Tom. I'll leave a link to the van build in the description if you're interested. I'm a huge believer in the power of technology, especially in its ability to empower small businesses and entrepreneurs. Yet I am fully aware of the benefits and challenges that the oncoming exponential technological change will bring for all of us. Technology creates opportunity, it levels playing fields, it provides access to new markets, it allows us to automate regular and mundane processes, save time, it turns local tiny markets, niches, into global addressable markets, it generates data for analysis to remove the guesswork from expenses, activities such as marketing. Technology helps to increase revenues and build stronger customer relationships. It can also reduce costs and increase efficiency and most importantly, productivity. The benefit for small business owners is greater income, reduced costs, less risk, and future-proofing their business through the embrace of innovation. The COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the pace of technological adoption, and even though this was often out of necessity, the, these changes are permanent. We're not going back to 2019. We saw online sales leapfrog the decade of forecast growth. In its research, Be The Business commented that we experienced three years of innovation and technological change and adoption in just the last three months. I spent five years of my life selling video conferencing and adoption was always a barrier to sales, whereas now you can't get anyone to take a voice call. It all sounds great, but there's a big problem facing small businesses and entrepreneurs, and especially those in the UK. Although small businesses are the backbone of our economy, they're critical to the repair of our damaged economy, their take-up of modern technology and business tools is woefully low. The lack of innovation being deployed in our small businesses and startups is resulting in reduced productivity, lower growth, reduced employment and reduced profitability. This has been recognised by the UK government and its industrial strategy as well. It's designed to boost productivity, to create jobs and to increase earning power. In fact, on average, UK small businesses are losing a day a week in lost productivity, mainly due to a lack of innovation and the adoption of available technologies and modern business tools. I want to be clear that it is definitely not due to any lack of ambition amongst UK small business owners and entrepreneurs. Many new businesses will be started as the permanent employment model breaks down and many more people are going to take control of their own financial destinies by starting a business. Small business owners are a time poor and they're often confused by their options. They're too often neglected, misunderstood and oversold or even missold in many cases by traditional large suppliers. Existing suppliers are just not set up to provide the guidance or services designed that are designed specifically for small businesses. So in this video, I'm going to go through the main barriers to technology adoption that need to be overcome. Let's get into it. <laughs> If you're interested in more content to help you generate more revenue, save time and money, or to understand and adopt the essential tech and business tools that you need to succeed in business, then please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Creating a community of entrepreneurs and small business owners and helping them to embrace the technology and business tools they need to be successful is what I'm going to be focusing on going forwards. Let me know in the comments or on social media what barriers you are experiencing that are preventing you from fully leveraging the power of technology in your business. I can then use that feedback to generate future content. 
I've based this video on some research by Nesta, which is a 400 million pound innovation foundation that I was a trustee of for six years. And also some more recent research by Be The Business, which is a government funded charity. I'll leave a link to the reports, both of them, maybe, maybe some others in the description. So what are the key issues facing small businesses that they seek technology solutions for? The research identifies four key areas where small businesses seek solutions. An obvious one is sales and marketing, number one. From a website to search engine optimization, to online marketing, content marketing, social media, or sales pipeline management, digital sales and marketing is a huge opportunity for growth. Yet it can be a major expense and it can be complex and confusing for many entrepreneurs and small business owners. Which software should you use? How does it work? And how do you design a marketing strategy using it? Number two, financial management. On Dragon's Den, pitching entrepreneurs were often taken to pieces by the Dragons, not me, but the other ones, uh, because they didn't know their numbers. Now, there's no longer, no longer an excuse not to know your numbers, given the amount of software that's now available from accounting to business intelligence, data analytics, financial forecasting, and even data about em individual employee performance. It can all be managed and linked together using APIs. Think of those as links between different applications that allow you to share data or link processes to provide business owners with all the information they need at their fingertips and in real time. Number three was operations and productivity. I made a video on operations in businesses with plans to scale up. I'll put the link in the description and above, but any business can use technology to streamline and simplify business operations, processes, security, and even basics such as storage and communications. Technology and access to outsourced business tools can reduce operational friction so that business owners can focus on the business of running their business. The fourth was admin. We all hate admin, but it's got to be done. From expenses, to filings, to employee-related admin, or the unavoidable but time-consuming legal and regulatory compliance requirements we all face. Admin needs to be minimised, especially for time-poor business owners with too much to get done in the time that's available. This all sounds sensible. Why isn't technology being adopted to deal with these issues? What are the barriers holding back owner-led businesses? The research by Nesta even found, this was at the beginning of the last decade, that the low productivity of new businesses coming into the economy actually had, believe it or not, a negative impact on overall UK productivity. And that makes no sense and it should never be the case. I've added to this research to highlight the seven main reasons why businesses are failing to embrace available technology to increase productivity, profitability, and to maximize your chance of success, whether that's financial or simply to have some more downtime with family or to stay in shape physically or mentally. Number one, the cloud services model. So I can remember a time when your first call when starting a business was to a local IT service provider who sold you a rack and hardware and software, a backup to take home and a service and support contract. They could earn a pretty good living doing that and you got all the support you needed, although they still tended to sell you the products they specialised in and preferred, it was easier for them. There was another supplier specialised in communications, as until quite recently, IT and communications were quite different worlds. The Zoom boom is often called, has ended that distinction once and for all. The cloud and software as a service model has changed all of that for good. The good news is, is that you no longer need to own and manage infrastructure or software, and you can purchase it on a subscription basis. What was once capital expenditure, or CapEx, is now a monthly expense, OPEX, and that can scale up and down with your business as and when it needs it, or depending on how many people you've got in your team. The bad news is, is that the friendly, this, this friendly local IT supplier, they can't make a living anymore from these small subscriptions and, and they've moved on to bigger customers. That business model has often evolved into the provision of expert advice, integration and support services. So at a time when a startup can access scale of infrastructure on which global banks operate and at a time when the power and range of software as a service solutions is exploding, access to support, guidance and the information required to purchase, deploy and manage these solutions is now almost 
non-existent. Number two, services are not designed for small businesses. Many software-based solutions are designed for large enterprises, but then they're tweaked for small businesses, but they're not really right size and nor is a cost. The purchasing decision of an owner-led business is completely different to that of a large enterprise. And the ease of deployment, uh, adoption, and the management of these software tools is critical. I'm always surprised that large enterprises use more technology per employee than small businesses. Again, that makes no sense. But they understand the power of technology and they employ very well-paid people and teams of people in procurement to select the optimal service, procure it, and then ensure it's deployed and adopted to achieve the objective. Whereas large enterprises used to suffer from huge, expensive and risky deployments and integration projects via systems integrators, they too are now benefiting from services that can be easily deployed and tested or integrated with a few clicks or lines of code. The API is slowly killing the systems integrator. This trend will result in improved productivity in large companies as well as small. Owner-led businesses, they, they lack the support. They often want tailored services, which can be hard to deliver without the associated cost. So self-serve, configurable options that are easy to use are extremely important. Solutions that are designed specifically for small businesses are becoming more common, but identifying them and making sound purchasing decisions is still very difficult. Number three, adoption is too expensive or difficult. Buying new technology or business tools is one thing. Using it or getting your team to use it and use it effectively for the purpose for which it was intended is another thing. Small business owners can have ways of doing things that have they've worked for many years and they understand the cost and they understand the benefits. They expect more, clearly, from new investments and an expectation gap can sort of grow between what was expected they were going to get and what they perceive they're getting. And that can result in huge frustration. I've been there myself. It can all seem like a waste of time and even worse, money. A balance needs to be found to ensure that all users feel confident that they're in control and that the investment results in the expected and ideally measurable benefits. Solutions designed for large enterprises or those that require hours of training are often not the right choice for owner-led businesses looking for fast and low-cost improvements that just do not distract from running the business itself. You know, there are only so many hours in the day. Purchase, deployment, adoption, and the management of solutions need to be simple. In fact, 53% of the respondents to the research by Be The Business had experienced an unsuccessful implementation. And that can often mean that they don't try again. Number four, switching risks or the cost of switching are too high. The fear of losing time or customer data during a migration to a new system or process is a common barrier to change. This inertia can result in solutions that are being paid for that are never actually deployed. In the research, 41% of respondents said that switching could be disruptive. That years of customer data may have been kept on a spreadsheet, on a laptop that hasn't been updated and isn't backed up, but still, the fear of losing that data when uploaded to a reliable, secure, cloud-based software solution can be tangible, can be real, and it may even keep business owners up at night. The experience of a, a poorly executed migration or change, or even a simple switch between a mobile phone network provider can put decision makers off future attempts. Solutions should be designed for small businesses with this fear in mind. They should make switching or integration using APIs simple and content should be provided to provide guidance and peace of mind on a one-to-many basis, whereas a one-to-one -one no longer costs him. Number five, lack of expertise and support. One of the main reasons for the low adoption of technology is simply a pervasive lack of understanding and knowledge about the options and then the support required to make the right decision and then to implement the tech or those business tools. As I've covered, there are far less support now than there used to be for small business owners. And one-to-one -one support isn't really affordable for the vast majority of businesses, unless it's something is quite specific as required. Small business owners and founders, they don't have time to spend hours sifting through conflicting online advice or trying to work out what content they should be listening to for guidance or you know, what is, and trying to work out what's just part of some sales funnel. 
FUD or fear, uncertainty and doubt is the enemy of technological adoption generally and it's important that owner led businesses have access to objective guidance even if it's just one to many content. Overcoming FUD is a matter of having the right access to the right information at the right time. Number six, end users don't adopt solutions. I learned the hard way that selling in technology is just part of the process. Without adoption, the customer isn't going to buy more or even continue paying for the service they've already bought. Also, many applications have you know, many genuinely useful and time-saving features that are just never used. People just tend to use the basics because it's easy and they're used to it and no one's training them. End user adoption and training is key for a business owner to maximize the return from any investment in new tech or business tools. Most software as a service providers recognize this and they provide guidance to ensure that adoption rates are high. They understand what actions result in low churn, you can kind of get locked in, and what will incentivize customers to take them. But this can result in embedded solutions that nobody really knows how to use and they can be hard to, to take out. Employees typically, they don't like change and may also be reluctant to ask for help. They often casually revert to using their own consumer technology outside the business, which can add risk, it can reduce your control, and it can even threaten your legal compliance. Access to guidance and support to maximize adoption and use of the service as it was intended is key to any successful deployment. This process also needs to continue as services are developed over time and new features are added. Number seven, and this is potentially a big one, apathy. The inertia generated by you know, good old fashioned human apathy cannot be underestimated. Apathy can be cultural, it can be personal. Common thoughts include, you know, it works, so why change it? The service providers are all as bad as each other, what's the point? I'm worried about the cost or disruption. I know how to use the current solution and I don't have the time to learn a new one, even if it is better, and I can make more money, or it just costs more money. You know, apathy dulls innovation and stunts the growth of businesses that are not willing to understand their options and embrace modern tech and business tools that can basically transform how they operate. Overcoming apathy also means overcoming many of the previous barriers that I've been through. To so reduce the barriers and make the process from you know, thinking about technology and adopting or change to buying the right tool or software to the adoption of it as seamless as possible. So if you're starting a business or you're running a small business or you want to scale up an existing business, think about the potential to embrace technology, to supercharge your business so that you can do more with less. That is increased productivity, and with that comes more income, or profit, or even just more time to do the other things that you love. That's it for now. So please don't forget to like this video so that others can watch, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on social media. Links to the research are in the description.